I made this with my bare hands. I'm Becca, I've been knitting for 25 years and it took me a long time to get into knitting sweaters. They're so darn intimidating. The first one I made maybe didn't turn out so well. But I recently finished this beauty and I'm going to be sharing with you how I think about the pattern, what I liked and didn't like, changes that I made, and changes that I wish I had made. I used the Channel Cardigan pattern by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. This is actually my third cardigan pattern of his that I've knitted and I didn't even necessarily do that on purpose. Just whenever I was picking a pattern, I always gravitated toward his. I mean, look, the man, the man knows what he's doing. The yarn is Knit Picks Swish Worsted in Rainforest Heather, and I really, really, really love the color. I mean, look at how gorgeous it is. And depending on the light, you catch different little flux of scarlet or purple, and it's just really cool. The techniques I used for this sweater are the tubular cast on, moss stitch, reading a chart, increasing, decreasing, cabled cast on or knitted cast on, Jenny super stretchy bind off, knitting in the round, knitting flat, and I think that's it. <laughs> so here's what I love about the pattern, or pros if you will. The stitch pattern itself and the texture that it creates is so beautiful. I mean, look at this, the chevron, the moss stitch, you know I'm rather partial to the moss stitch, and the way that it creates these vertical stripes. I mean, it's gorgeous, right? Not only are they beautiful and do they have such a luxurious texture, but they're actually pretty easy to remember, so you don't have to be totally glued to the pattern the whole time you're knitting. I mean, moss stitch is pretty simple, and this just has a two-row repeat. And with the chevron, even though it is a chart and you have to really look at it, once you get going, it's not hard to remember what you're supposed to be doing. The schematics in the pattern are laid out really well, so it helped me to visualize how everything was laid out, I, even though it was all in different pieces. Um, I always appreciate when they have the detailed schematic of the measurements of different parts of the garment. And um, he even had one where all of the stitch markers were in relation to side seams and the center and all of the decreasing and increasing for the shaping, and that, that actually really helped me a lot. There are plenty of opportunities built in to kind of increase and decrease to shape it to your body. Without messing up the stitch pattern, you kind of just do it in the seed stitch panels. And I thought that was genius as far as making it more easily customizable. Since it's worsted weight, it's really warm, but it's not too bulky to just wear around all the time in the house, which I 100% have been doing since I finished it. I pretty much wear it, I wear it every day. All right, cons. As beautiful and amazing as the chevron pattern is, since I was working with kind of a darker colored yarn, I realized pretty quickly that I could not work on it in dim lighting because I couldn't see what I was doing well enough and I would make a mistake and have to frog it back. And I also did have to concentrate because with the chevron, when you're looking at it, it's easy to read, but it's hard to knit at it when you're not really looking at it and paying attention because every row is different. Um, so it was totally worth it. But if you don't have a lot of spare mental energy, that might present um, a, a challenge. For the modifications I made, I used a special ribbing technique for my two by two ribbing so that it doesn't look all splitty when it stretches. It's a really nice and neat ribbing. Comment below if you would like a tutorial for that. I could totally make one. I did Jenny's super stretchy bind off along the back of the collar in the middle here, which I don't know if you would really count that as a modification, but the pattern didn't specify it. I added a little length to the bottom because I noticed in a lot of the pictures that it looked like the belt was kind of low and I naturally have a higher waist and I knew that would bother me. So I thought that I would just add some length below, but then I forgot to subtract the length above. So it ended up completely defeating the purpose. I really thought about not putting in the eyelets for the belt loopholes 
but I did it anyway. And I ended up sewing the belt loops into the top hole, but not the bottom. And I just flipped it up because the belt was gonna be awfully low for my body. My gauge when I swatched was a little bit tight. I couldn't quite get the exact gauge. I think the yarn is maybe just a teensy bit lighter than a standard worsted. Maybe it's just me. And I decided to go with the tighter gauge rather than looser because sweaters tend to stretch out a lot. And I'm happy with that decision, except that I forgot to take that into consideration in the size that I made. And I probably should have made one size bigger. So things I would change next time. I would definitely grade up a size below the waist. I think part of the problem with the bottom hem is that with the special ribbing technique I mentioned, as great as it is, it has wonderful stretch recovery and elasticity, which makes it cinch up a little bit tighter than a traditional ribbing. And so I maybe should have used a size larger needles down there. Um, I think, honestly, I think next time I would just grade it up to at least a whole size bigger for the bottom. I usually do do that to my sweaters because I know that I'm a size larger below the waist than I am above. But I sometimes don't do a very good job of making the transition from one size to the next. I end up with a little hump there. And so I just, I don't know, I didn't this time and then I wish that I had. I would definitely make the belt loop holes higher or remove them altogether. I ended up getting the belt loop inserted just fine in the spot where there wasn't a hole. So they're not 100% necessary, but they are really nice to make sure that you have them placed evenly. So I, I probably would just make them higher up. I would definitely make one or two more buttonholes if I keep the length the same, because it kind of bothers me that I can't button it very much above where the belt is. Last but not least, I would start it in the spring so that it would be ready for me to wear all winter. I started this one in September and finished it near the end of January. So it was a little intense. Overall, I love this sweater and I almost never knit the same pattern twice, but I kind of want to make another one of these. It's not a great stash busting project though, so not until I've reduced my stash a little more with some other projects, I'm gonna be good. I would definitely use the same yarn again, of course in a different color, but it has great stitch definition and even though it's a 100% wool, it doesn't make me itchy, which is saying a lot because I have a really hard time wearing wool sweaters. It does help that I wear t-shirts under it so it's not on my bare skin up here, but it's it's really soft and it's a super wash, which I know some people have opinions about super wash, but I appreciate that I don't have to worry about it as much and that also does make it a little bit less itchy. I've got all the relevant links for the pattern and the yarn in the description box below. And until next time, check out the video on your screen over here. And as always, more on BeccaJNorman.com.